Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to the series my chess games. So in this series of my YouTube chess channel I'm going to show you some of my games that I played recently and uh, today I wanted to show you really I think it's an instructive and a great game against a 2570 rated player. Uh, I played it uh, game yesterday. I've shown this game also in my community tab uh, in this uh, of my YouTube chess channel but I wanted to show you really a proper analysis of this particular line because this is I think a very instructive Interactive chess game that you can use in order to get a better understanding how to play against the Maroxi bind of the hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense. Because uh, if you're familiar with my YouTube chess channel, I've created also this series, uh, the hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense, uh, in which I've sh shown you already about 25 uh, videos how to play this very nice and aggressive opening. So, this game that I wanted to show you today will be added also in the hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense series for those will have maybe troubles to play against e4 you can also check it out i will show you the link of this series also at the end of the video and also i'll show you the link of this link of my chess game so you can maybe uh, follow uh, some of my games and maybe have a good opening preparation against e4 so this um, will be really an aggressive game and basically my opponent uh, which was basically a uh, stronger opponent uh, he had a better rating rating than me but he went really into one of my my lines that I've really uh, prepared in which I have a really a deep preparation and uh, I wanted to show you some great tactical motifs that can, you can play in this Maroxi bind setup that my opponent uh, has played here. So let's see the game. If uh, 4 I played the move c5 after knight to f3. I played the common move g6. Uh, as I explained already, this hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense uh, you should, if you start to watch the series, watch it from the introduction video, then after that, uh, you can check out some more particular lines that can happen to you in this very, very nice opening. So, uh, after the move d4, we have c takes d4, uh, knight takes d4, uh, bishop to g7, and now c4. So, this is now the setup of uh, white. Uh, white has a, a central control uh, with this knight and these two pawns, and one of the bad things for white is always the problem of this life square bishop because this life square bishop is a little bit blocked out by its own pawn on c4 i played the move knight to c6 challenging the knight on d4 in some occasions you see that your opponent will try knight to c2 i've explained also uh, this particular move in in the hyper accelerated ranks and still in defense series my opponent tried the natural move bishop to e3 i played knight to f6 with an attack on the e4 pawn uh, knight to c3 and now castling bishop to e2 and here d6 after f3 you see this is already a uh, sort of a tricky move by my opponent because after uh, knight takes d4 and bishop takes d4 i play the move a5 and this a5 uh, i've explained now many times of the series is the preparation to play uh, knight to d7 then knight to c5 if the position allows it even trade off the darts with bishops then maybe have a really a nice blocking system with the move knight to c5 and then maybe with the move a4 keeping the position on the queen side compact and try to get maybe into a favorable end game in which B uh, white will have the bad bishop here on e2 and i will still have maybe an active bishop uh, which, which can move maybe to e6 so these are really the strategic elements of this hyper accelerated dragon Sicilian defense against the Maroxi bind, and my opponent played the move queen to d2, and uh, it's really an, it seems like a natural move, nothing special, nothing fancy, as I always like to say, but there is really one uh, good idea of why it's uh, about this move queen to d2. Uh, for instance, if I play a passive move like bishop to d7 immediately, uh, then my opponent could queen, go queenside castling and try to move g4, h4, uh, the common h5 attack, like in the Yugoslav attack. It's similar to the Yugoslav attack against the Dragon Sicilian defense. Uh, so it would be maybe, I think, a faster attack for white here. So that's why I decided after the move queen to d2 uh, to not allow my opponent to castle queenside immediately uh, i wanted to force him to castle on the king side the that's why this queen to d2 uh, move was really a tricky one um i really want him to castle on the same side then we don't have this opposite side attack game which i wouldn't like in this particular position so that's why i played the move a4 so now if my opponent for instance queen uh, castles queenside i'll have immediately the move a3 uh 
it and it would uh, really weaken the pawn structure my opponent would be forced to play something like b3 and the position around the white king would be already endangered then i would try maybe something like bishop to uh, d7 and maybe try uh, even a pawn sacrifice with the move b5 just in order to open maybe the c file for the rook so this would be uh, also dangerous for white now after the move a4 to castle on the queen side so that's why my opponent finally uh, castle king side and now when the uh, kings are on the same side i'm sure that my opponent will not try uh, now some flank attacks with the g4 uh, and h4 and similar ideas because if he does it then he weakens his pawn structure even further in front of the king so that's why here i think I have at least equalized the position, I still have some uh, possibilities and now I want to go with my plan to play this move knight to d7, knight to c5, again trading off the dark sword bishops and again try to um, continue uh, and go maybe into an endgame uh, in which uh, white has this bad bishop. So uh, I hope I'm not complicating too much for you, these are really the strategical elements, this is really some of my deep preparation against the Moroxy bind in the game. Uh, I play bishop to d7. I want uh, to bring the bishop first on the natural square. Maybe a better idea for me would have been to play uh, queen to a5 now immediately. Um, okay, but there are maybe some tactical threats after rook to d1. Then my opponent could try knight to d5 and knight to e7. Uh, this is also a common tactical possibility to grab sort of a pawn here uh, for white. Uh, that's why uh, maybe queen to a5, better move, but... Um, here I played bishop to d7, uh, now my opponent tried rook to d1, getting this uh, rook on the same file like the queen, for instance if the position clears on the d file then my queen could be endangered, and I played now bishop to c6. Here we have rook from a to c1, and now I tried this idea, knight to d7, uh, for instance if my opponent trades off these bishops, uh, I can play uh, king to g7, and after queen to d4, I can go maybe king to g, uh, g8 again, and uh, if my opponent for instance jumps, of uh, with the knight on d5 i would simply take out the knight and after my, maybe something like c takes d4 i could go simply uh, for uh, trades of rooks and still this bishop is a little bit weak although it still has a good diagonal but i don't like simply uh, this white pawn structure in the center so many pawns on like squares and having the like square bishop here i can also try now finally my uh, very nice knight outpost on c5 and this knight on c5 would be really hard for white to challenge uh, this would be really sort of an octopus knight in which my opponent uh, basically cannot challenge it and i can go even in with some in some positional trades of pieces with queen to b6 trading off the queens because if the queens are off the board then i have simplified the position as i said uh, i played against a player who had the uh, 200 uh, rating points more than me so i I decided to simplify the position as fast as I can. So uh, that's why after the move knight to d7, you see my opponent tried to complicate the position and stayed with the bishop on the board with the move bishop to e3. And now I tried knight to c5. Anyway, if bishop takes c5, uh, d takes c5, uh, this is not a good position here for white because now in the next move I can occupy this uh, square d4 with my bishop and this bishop would be really hard to challenge for, for white. Uh, you see with these problems around the, the king white will have darker problems and this bishop would be really the best minor piece on the board so that's why after the move knight to c5 my opponent tried to move knight to d5 and here i decided to uh, kick away the knight with the move e6 knight to uh, uh, knight to c3 and now bishop to e5 if my opponent for instance try to kick away the uh, bishop with the move f4 i have bishop takes c3 queen takes c3 and now <coughs> <coughs> knight takes e4 again attacking the queen and after same, maybe something like uh, queen to uh, d4 i could maybe go f5 cementing my knight after something like bishop to f3 i still have uh, this move uh, uh, d5 in order to support my knight okay i have some dark score problems but uh, it's really hard also for uh, for white to uh, regroup a little bit with the bishop with moves as bishop to d2 i could go something like h6 king to uh, king to h7 and then rook to g8 in order to protect everything on dark squares here i'm a pawn up as i said a pawn is a pawn so uh still white 
has to battle here for a win. Uh, that's why my opponent, after the move bishop to e5, did go into this f4 line. He tried to move knight to b5. And this is now a part really of my uh, preparation of the small oxy bind. This knight to b5 is really a mistake which your opponent can make in the Maroxi bind setup. When he does it, I want you really to recognize one tactical possibility because the knight on c3 has left now, after the move knight to b5, the defense of this very important e4 square. And this is now something that I want you to recognize in your own position because now I played queen to h4. Um, it seems now that uh, white can defend with the move g3. If you, for instance, play the move h3, then it's not good. Then I have uh, queen to uh, g2 and then you'll have uh, really, really some troubles here on dark source. So my opponent tried to counterplay with the move g3. I played bishop takes g3, h takes g3, queen takes, and now king to f1. And now... Uh, you see the problems when the knight has uh, left the defense of this uh, square e4. I played knight takes e4. Sacrificing another piece. Uh, so, so far I have sacrificed two pieces. But now after f takes e4, I have the move f5. And uh, I'm not seeing a good way how uh, white uh, should progress uh, should, should make some progress here because uh, basically this game is really really lost for white after the move bishop to uh, f2 uh, if if you for instance pass through then you get a very annoying check here you get even checkmated here bishop to g2 you have only one square and now this discovered attack by the queen we have bishop to f3 you have only one square and uh, again this would be a very very tricky game here after queen to g2 your opponent can um, uh, cannot hide i have again some check possibilities here king to uh, f1 and again uh, here after something like this i oh, pardon me this is not good uh, here i have queen, uh, bishop to h3 and it's checkmate on g2 so uh, that's why you see passing through is not a possibility uh, here in the game my opponent tried uh, after the move uh, f5 let's go back after the move f5 he tried bishop to f2 uh, in order to uh, protect his king but now after f takes e4 now you see this rook comes very actively into the game you cannot protect uh, the bishop if you try queen to e3 of course i'll simply take out the queen if you try queen to uh, queen to e1 then i have uh, e3 with the pawn then you lose again the bishop in the game my opponent tried bishop to f3 uh, rook takes f3 and now after uh, king to uh, e1, queen to g2, simply attacking uh, this bishop. Uh, in the game, my opponent tried queen to e2, but now I simply used this other rook in the game. Here, my opponent tried uh, bishop to uh, b6 in order to escape, but now simply check rook to f1. We have king to uh, d2, and now rook to f2 anyway, because I don't mind to lose the rook here, because uh, my idea is to take out the queen after uh, rook to. Uh, rook to e1 i played e3 very important move because now i want to get the queen also into the game uh and try even some checkmate threats because i can always take the queen it's not about taking the queen immediately here in the game uh bishop uh, uh, pardon me king to d3 was played and now queen to e4 in the game my opponent tried king to c3 and here i simply took uh, uh rook takes e2 rook takes e2 and now d5 of trying to track the position and here my opponent tried uh the move knight to d4 here i played e5 and here after knight to c3 i really missed the move here i missed the checkmate in one i should have played k queen takes c4 uh, but i was uh, simply stuck to to the plan i was playing here uh, simply one particular plan to get this pawns rolling i really missed this uh missed this uh mate in one i played b takes c3 and here after um uh, b takes c6 here after c takes d5 we have c takes d5 <coughs> b3 and here i simply pass through d4 king to b2 and now d3 these pawns are rolling uh one of them will promote uh, to queen for sure and in this position my opponent resigned you see how many pawns i have on the board as said this is now completely winning endgame here for me and uh, this was game over so i hope you r realize these ideas uh let's go back this 
this I want you to really memorize this particular moment when your opponent tries to attack your d6 pawn it seems now that you have lost the pawn because uh, after the queen was here you cannot protect anymore the d6 now queen to h4 attacking and after g3 bishop takes uh, h takes queen takes and now a very important move to recognize knight takes e4 sacrificing another piece with the pos possibility to simply pass through here with the move f5 opening the f file combined with this bishop this is really a deadly attack against this moroxibite setup that my opponent has prepared okay i hope you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other uh, chess games my chess games that i've so far analyzed and you can also watch the series hyper accelerated dragon sicilian defense uh, check it out i think you can have a great preparation against e4 uh, with so many sidelines there are really really so many many sidelines that i've explained we'll also continue uh, to do more and more of the sidelines possible uh, that are possible uh, and uh, i hope you can really get a good preparation against e4 because i had my troubles while playing against e4 i think i have a good preparation against this particular setup uh, and uh, check it out uh, as i said you can also watch my king's indian video in which I show you also a nice and effective weapon uh, while playing against d4 and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and uh, chess is the best of course